Hi, my name is Robert. This video is designed to give you step-by-step -step detailed instruction on completing the task at hand. Visit my YouTube channel and watch my disclaimer video. And please like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find the information you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. Today I'm going to talk about tune-ups. In the modern day car, you basically have three categories of care that you need to be concerned with. Number one is upkeep. Number two is maintenance and number three is repairs so I think upkeep is just your normal everyday uh, looking after the car clean keeping the surface clean keeping the oil topped off keeping the tires properly inflated things like that you know just dealing with everyday things to help to keep the car going on a daily basis which also includes keeping it fueled up keeping the coolant level checked the next stage is tune-ups. Now you need to check your owner's manual for tune-up recommendations and tune-ups includes changing filters, uh, oil filters, not so much because that's kind of like daily upkeep, but your air filters, your fuel filters, things like that. Also it includes changing the spark plugs, pollen filters, and uh, uh, extended service uh, fluids like your transmission fluids and your uh, coolant fluids and brake fluids. Those are tune-up required items. And then when you get into repairs, it's simply as put as fixing stuff that breaks. You know, brake pads wear down, window switches break, CV axles wear out, the boots tear. You know, if something breaks on the car, it just needs to be fixed when it happens. So, I'm not real big on changing items that need to be repaired. You know, I don't change CV axles every 100,000 miles. I repair them when they break. I don't repair, uh, change brake pads or rotors when they, you know, get 50,000 miles on them. I replace them when they wear out or when they get warped. So, let's go over what's needed in a tune-up. Primarily when you do a tune-up, you're trying to make sure that the air uh, flow in the car is is proper with changing of its air filters things like that You want to make sure that the ignition system is good Which basically is has to do with the spark plug wires and the spark plugs And you want to make sure that the fuel delivery system is good, which basically is just a fuel filter When you're doing your basic tune-up on a car you want to have your spark plugs your air filters uh mass airflow sensor cleaner if you have a mass airflow sensor your basic screwdrivers your base basic ratchet wrenches a torque wrench if you're going to change your spark plugs maybe some uh, penetrant to help get rusty bolts off uh, drip pans uh, coolant uh, fuel injector cleaner just stuff like that some distilled water if you're going to flush your radiator get the proper coolant that goes in the car, things like that, that'll help you complete this uh, tune-up. And if your car has a special system in it, you may want to uh, be prepared to replace those parts as well. As mentioned, I think you should start out with the owner's manual. These cars are built and manufactured, but primarily designed by engineers, with lack of a better term, probably make more money than I do and understand how these things work better than I do. So I always try to primarily use their recommendations as a guide. I do my best never to exceed their recommendations, but sometimes I err on caution and try to maybe do things a little sooner than they suggest, especially if history has proven that it's better to err on caution than to take it to the limit. Usually in the front of the manual, after the warnings and cautions, you'll find a table of contents and it'll tell you where the maintenance and service recommendation section is, and this one, section 11. When you go to section 11, you want to look for the maintenance schedule. So right here on page 11-3, it talks about the schedule of the maintenance and it should tell you when it's time to do certain items. So. Let's find the real schedule on this vehicle. And sometimes, as this one says, 
it has a whole separate booklet for maintenance schedule items. The good thing about the owner's manual is it'll point out where things are located in the engine compartment and oftentimes it'll also show you how to actually service these different items in here. So here it shows you where the oil drain pan is and the oil drain plug. So it shows you how to change the oil and explains that to you. It also tells you the weight oil that is recommended in the optional oil weight. A lot of people get stuck on the preferred oil and never look at the optional oil. But here you see 530 is a preferred oil, but it stops at about 105 degrees or 106 degrees. If you live in an area that rarely gets under zero degrees, but sometimes gets over 100, you may want to use 1030 or 1040 in this vehicle. So I go back in the glove box and sure enough, there's a warranty and maintenance book. It has information in here about previous owners. And most importantly, I want to find the maintenance uh, schedule to see what things need to be changed at what intervals. Okay, here's the chart that's showing you different things that need to be serviced under what I would consider a either upkeep or tune-up on this vehicle and you got to remember these cars have two basic uh, service schedules one of them is severe and the other one is normal severe normally points to cars that are driven real hard or cars that are primarily used in city driving bumper to bumper traffic type of situation and rarely gets out on the highway so you can decide where you want to get your service at as far as if it's severe or normal. Some of them will recommend oil changes every 3750 miles like right there. And some will recommend 5000 Depends on the type of driving. Now, the things that I'm more concerned with is looking at things that have to do with the tune-up here. So, when we look at the fuel filter... It says the fuel filter should be replaced, I believe that says, every 30,000 miles. It also says that spark plugs should be replaced at every 30,000 miles on uh, the 3.0 liter and every 60,000 miles on the other motor cars. So determine what vehicle you have, determine how often this stuff needs to be replaced, and keep it tuned up. If for some reason you can't find the owner's manual in your glove box, uh, you can obtain them from uh, different after uh, shopping places like eBay. You could get them at the dealer, but a lot of manufacturers actually have these owner's manual online now. So you can go online. Some of them require that you register. Some of them you don't. The Volvos do not require any registration to view the maintenance information in the owner's manuals. But I have seen that some manufacturers do, like the Acuras. So, find the owner's manual for your car, look at the maintenance schedule, and go from there. So, let me go ahead and go over some of the typical tune-up things that you would do on a car that, let's say, you acquire with excess of 60,000 miles on it. Okay, when it comes to upkeep and uh, tune-up items on a car, basically 60,000 miles is a limit that everything should have been replaced that has to do with upkeep, maintenance, and tune-up. Uh, the only exception to that is a timing belt. Most timing belts are 70,000 miles or 100,000 miles or 105,000 miles. And if the car has an excess of that, if I don't have written, documented proof that it's been done with associated items, I put that on my plan and quick schedule to get that item replaced. Because in most cars, probably 80% of the vehicles on the road today, if the timing belt breaks, it'll destroy the motor. Now, that's not something you can look at and tell, so try not to go there. Now, you can glance at the timing belt sometimes if you remove the cover. It's normally protected. In this car, it's under this cover here. If you see that the belt's frayed or has cracks, change it immediately. If you can't tell it's where, then get it done as soon as you can. Other than the timing belt, this is what you want to do to a car that basically needs a tune-up. In most vehicles, 
your coolant or antifreeze is good for three to five years. Go ahead and have the coolant drained, flushed with uh, water, preferably distilled water, and then put new coolant in. So that's one item that I do. Another item that may need to be changed, but sometimes have a long change interval on it, 50, 80, 100,000 miles, is the fuel filter. In this car, the fuel filter is handy and up front. So here's the fuel filter, and I can see that this fuel filter doesn't quite fit in this bracket that it's in. It seems to be loose. My guess is it's been replaced with an aftermarket filter, so it's probably okay. But a lot of times people change those every 50,000 miles or when they have issues or as outlined in the owner's manual, which is probably 10 years or 100,000 miles. Another item on the tune-up list is the brake fluid. The brake fluid sits in that reservoir right on top of the brake master cylinder. Normally brake fluid needs to be replaced every two, three to five years and uh, sometimes they'll say 30,000 miles or something like that. But you want to check, make sure you put the right type in there, have the old fluid bled out and replace with the new fluid. Another thing that's uh, normally changed in a, a tune-up is your spark plug wires. I'm not a big fan of putting aftermarket spark plug wires on foreign cars. Some of these cars are engineered by their engineers of their uh, country of origin, and they've specifically fine-tuned these cars to run with certain wires. If you install aftermarket wires, they may not last as long, they may not spark as, as good. So I say buy OEM wires or wires that you, you are sure are of equal or superior quality. So if you change spark plug wires, I say do them every 100,000 miles or if they have issues or uh, 10 years. You know, things in there have to be degraded. And I've seen cars with 17-year-old spark plug wires in there, and I think that's just asking for ignition problems. So uh, one way to tell if your spark plug wires are bad is ohm them out. Another way to tell is to start the car and when it's dark outside and look under the hood and see if you could see any arcing from the wires arcing on any other parts under the hood little flashes or flickers of light coming off the wires. On the spark plug wires, you can also disconnect them and inspect the boots, look in them, look, look for cracks or anything that doesn't seem to be right. If you pull a wire and the end of it comes off, you know that wire is bad, but you know, look close to those wires and some wires actually have dates on them. Now these I know have been changed I don't know how recently, but, you know, they're aftermarket wires. So, again, there may be an issue with these wires because this car is, is running a little bit rough. Other than the spark plug wires, you want to check the spark plugs. Now, uh, spark plugs, you follow the wires down, and they're inside the motor. You'll have to get a tool to reach them, and you'll have to pull the spark plug wires off of them and remove the spark plugs to check them and replace them. Your owner's manual will tell you how they're supposed to be gapped and how often they're supposed to be replaced. Under severe conditions, replace them sooner than later. The uh, fallacy with the new modern day cars is the computer tries to compensate for worn and bad parts. So our tendency as humans is to drive the car until it has driving uh, malfunctions or driving issues. I want to encourage you not to do that. Get these things replaced on schedule so you don't experience these driving issues. For instance, if you have problems with getting poor spark, that may lead you to put more strain on other parts like the wires and things like that to try to compensate for it, overworking the fuel system, overworking the air system, and those things just may cause the car to wear out other parts faster. So change the spark plug when they're supposed to be changed. A common mistake people make when tuning up a car is in choosing the spark plugs. 
Use your owner's manual and choose primarily the type of spark plug that the car recommends. And in some vehicles, it's even good to use the actual brand. But the type matters. Uh, here, we have a spark plug. As you can see, it came with a protective sleeve over the tip of it to protect the end of it. And the, the, the gapping, these come pre-gapped. The uh, metal sleeve is supposed to have some special coating on it to help it not get locked into the motor. And you're not supposed to use anti-seize on them. A lot of times I do. Now, if you look at these two spark plugs, this one here is a copper tip. It is your regular, general, uh, basic spark plug that has been used in cars for many, many years. This Subaru with the 2.5 engine, 2001, was actually designed and engineered to run best with this type of plug. The plug that I'm pulling out of it, as you can see, it has a different type tip on it. Well, this spark plug is what they call a platinum tip spark plug. The tip comes to a point, and people consider that to be an upgraded plug. Well, using an upgraded plug in a car that's designed to have a regular type of spark plug and tip may cause strain on the ignition system because it may take a different, say, voltage to get that plug to fire as well as it would a what some people consider lower quality standard plug. So getting upsold on plugs that cost four or five or six dollars a piece may not be a good idea when you're replacing spark plugs on a car that was designed to use regular copper tip plugs. And it could quickly develop uh, driving issues. The first month or two it may drive fine and you may think it's driving better. Then after that, as those uh, plugs are strained and start to foul, it may cause driving issues where these plugs will drive well for 60,000 miles in this vehicle. So when replacing plugs, go with the manufacturer's recommendation. I think those engineers designed the entire system to work best on those. Uh, do what you want, that's what I do. The next thing in the primary tune-up is your air system. Uh, as you can see, this car has an air intake that's up high. The tube comes around to the passenger side and goes into the air box. The air filter is in the air box. The, most of these air filters are recommended to be replaced every 15,000 miles. Some uh, uh, people go a little longer, but I really wouldn't recommend it. So what I do is I open the air box I inspect the filter. I try to vacuum out any rubbish that's in there with a vacuum cleaner, and I replace the filter if it shows any signs of dirt or if I know it's reached its time. Because your air, your fuel, and your spark is the primary things that makes your engine run smooth and happy. Now, there are options to your regular paper filter. This is what's called a K&N filter. It's normally used in cars that they try to get performance out of. This is supposed to be a million mile filter. And with this filter, what you do is every 30, 50,000 miles, however often you like to do it, you take the filter out, you shake out the dust, you vacuum off the larger particles, and then you clean it with a, a solution that's made for cleaning it. Some people use their own solutions for cleaning it. And then you re-lubricate it with a special lubricant that comes with this type of uh, filter or you buy as an accessory. So you may have one of these reusable air filters in your car. Go ahead and service that as well. Other than what I mentioned, there's really uh, no big deal to a tune-up. Some cars, you know, built uh, before, let's say, 2000, they may have a, a distributor cap. That is something that I normally replace every 50 or 100,000 miles, depending on how the car is running. And some of them have the rotor under that, which I also replace every 50 to 100,000 miles. So if you picked up a car that has an excess of 100,000 miles, just give it a full system tune-up, replacing all the ignition parts, your fuel filter, and your other fluids like your coolant and your brake fluids. And you should have a car that hopefully will last you as long as you need it to. 
Your modern day vehicles have a nether breather system in it called the PCV system. And this Volvo actually has one that's a little bit more complicated and it's uh, incorporated in with the turbo system or if it's not a turbo car it still has one but it's a positive crankcase ventilation system and you want to check to make sure that that system is in good condition most cars it's not a real big deal but on these Volvo five cylinder engines especially it is here's part of the tube that comes up to the top of the motor there's a breather box under the intake manifold there's tubes that come up around the throttle body there's tubes that go into the turbo system and that needs to be checked to make sure it's in good condition. I got a separate video for that. Now, if you keep your vacuum lines and your vacuum elbows in, in good condition and replace when they go bad, and uh, keep your oil chains and stuff like that, this system may never need to be replaced. But if it gets plugged up because you've been driving it with poor uh, vacuum lines and poor maintenance, then you may need to replace the whole system. So make sure you, you check that out. On this Subaru, you got this hose here that's part of the PCV system, and it probably has a PCV valve in here somewhere that if it gets clogged or damaged will need to be replaced. So you need to know a little bit about your PCV system and make sure it's serviceable, but keeping your vacuum lines in good condition also usually goes a long way with that system. Some of your older cars, like mine, has an EGR system. If you look down there, you'll see the EGR valve right down here. You want to make sure that those vacuum tubes are in good shape. And if the system is throwing an error code, you may have to disable, disassemble that system and replace and clean out those valves. Now, if you're going to do your PCV system in this Volvo, and take this intake manifold off, that's a good time to clean out the EGR system because sometimes it builds up with carbon. When you're doing a tune-up every 30,000 miles or so, it may be a good idea to get some mass airflow sensor cleaner and uh, take that tube off the airflow sensor, clean that sensor off a little bit, and close that back up. That's all I have when talking about tune-ups on cars. You can get more in-depth. You can get a little briefer if you know some of these other systems in good shape. But if you have any questions, feel free to post them. Me or someone else would be glad to answer. If you feel that this information was beneficial, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can also subscribe to my channel so that you can get notification of future videos that I post. Visit my channel. I have all types of do-it-yourself videos there. You can leave questions here, and I'll try to respond to them as quick as possible. You can also visit my website at robertspinner.com. Thanks again for watching.